Hey everyone, we're here in the Storm Warehouse in Brigham City, Utah. I'm Leanne Holsenberg and I'm here with Steve Klemkin. We're here today to talk to you about our new bowling balls, the Alpha Crux and the Pitch Blue. We, uh, we've had a couple new releases already this year with the Phase and Fight. We have so many good bowling balls starting our year. We're off to such a good start this year. Yeah, it's been a huge year for us, Leanne, and there's been a lot of great different uh, variety of cover stocks and cores, new developments, new technologies. Really, when we introduce new bowling balls, one of the big things we're looking at is trying to make sure that there's a specific type of a ball motion or a reaction that fits a need. So we're looking at how do we create ball motion that's unlike others. We don't just release a ball to introduce it. There's a specific point in the purpose. And for these four bowling balls this year for 2016, you are definitely going to see a different variety of motions. This is, it's almost a, the most complete four ball arsenal you could put together just with these four releases themselves. Right. I've noticed that uh, every one of them does something different. And I'm so happy because I know I'm going to have four new bowling balls in my bowling bags this year. So. Yeah. Yeah, there's a big, and, and there's been a lot of successes already on the PBA Tour, for example. You know, we just had the Tournament of Champions yep. earlier this month. And Don Barrett had 300 with the Alpha Crux. Anthony Simonson did as well. And Oscu Palerma, I think, as well, also had 300 with that. Some, some big wins. And Don Barrett as well, he had 300 with the Phase. Yep. The, yeah. uh, our Storm staff has been loving the new equipment, and uh, we're off to a good start. So let's slow down a minute and talk about bowling balls. When we, you guys, are trying to bring a new bowling ball to the market, how, how long does it take to develop a bowling ball? You start That's, with like yeah. a new core, a new cover, you have to match them up. There's probably a lot of theories and all that going on, but what do you do to make a new bowling ball? That's a great question, Leanne. And you know, and that's something when, when I'd mentioned before about when we create new technologies and we're looking at creating different types of ball motion, different types of shapes, for example, we're looking for a specific type of motion on the lane. So we're testing something specific. Now how we get there is going to depend on what type of cover stock we use. It's going to depend also on what type of core, weight block shape. And there'll be lots of different iterations and inversions that we will go through and put together trying to get exactly what we want. And that's a little what, bit of trial and error. Some of it's trial and error, yeah. but it's also with a specific thought in mind. Right. Now, we do know that cover stock is it's the part of the ball that actually touches, touches the lane. The so lane. that's the most important or controlling factor. And that's why, when I was telling you before, for 2016, we've introduced four brand new cover stocks that have never been in our line before. Wow. Uh, and, and this is the work of, you know, Victor Marion, Hank Boomershine, for example, R&D. This is the heart of R&D, Max Neal as well. Um, they work specifically on developing these new technologies and making sure that when we go out in the lanes that we are getting the exact reaction and motion that we're looking for. Right. You have a great team to work with to bring these new products. Yes, we do. And uh, how long? in the term of like months did it take to bring the, well, Alpha Crux is not a new, it's a new cover, not new a new cover core, stock. but let's yep. say um, a brand new ball. How long does it take in months to make it? Well, it can really vary, Leanne. I mean, there's a lot of times where you can, you know, you're searching for something and you hit the nail on the head with that first swing, right. you know. Um, there's a lot of time when you're developing a new core shape. We use the latest uh, computer technology, the latest programs to develop those different types of shapes. Right. And when you're trying to incorporate that into a production type of a setting, sometimes it works great, sometimes it takes more effort. Sure. Now, cover stock technology, you know, there, there's been a saying that we've used before when we've tried to describe cover stocks, and you know, they say that, that polymer science is not an exact science. So there's little tweaks and little additives and subtractions and changes in your process and components that make huge differences in the types of reactions that you get on the lane. It's also the interaction of the oil, the inter different types of panels and different types of releases and bowlers. I mean, how many times have you seen a new release where somebody says, I threw this ball and it's great and I love it and it does this or that. And you're like, well, I like mine too, but mine actually gives me about two boards less on the back right. end. For you, it gives two boards more. Right. So it de it's dependent upon Just releases. Just because you like it doesn't mean I'm going to like it in the same way that he's going to like it. Yeah. And there's so many variables. Yeah, and that, again, leads back to our original discussion where we were talking about trying to create a, a strong arsenal and a variety of bowling balls to choose from because we're all different as bowlers. Um, when I joined Storm yeah. about five or six years ago, um, the first thing I noticed was that 
it was such a complete arsenal of bowling balls and you already mm. said that and that's our goal at the bowlers company to build an arsenal for all players different all players of um, different styles different techniques different speeds different rotations um, why is that so important for storm and how do you um, mm. think about that when you're when you're building a new product yeah yeah it's a great point Leanne and that's one of the things you know when we're looking at introducing new technologies like and, and again I know we've hit on it a few times but we're all different right I mean we all yeah, have no different two styles are the same. so that's why it's important to make sure that we have a variety of choices so depending on your game depending on your bowling center when we're bowling in all these different centers across the country we're gonna encounter different bowling environments there's right. going to be different surfaces, surfaces exactly. different types of and oil. the lanes break down differently depending right. on who's bowling on that particular mm -hmm. pair you know as you're crossing the house at a pwba event you know that not every pair is the same right for your eight game block you bowl on eight basically different pairs right in eight different reactions so when you're under that kind of an environment it's important to make sure that you know that you have a ball you can go back to in your bag to choose from that's going to get you back to the pocket so then you're putting it back on us as the bowler you're giving us all this great great equipment, but it's for us to know which one goes where in our bag and how which one's our benchmark ball and which one we go to and all that. And I think as a bowler, that's one of the most important things. I have such great equipment, but it's up to me to learn them and know which one reacts compared to the other one thing. And, yeah. and we're going to actually have you on the lanes here in our next segment. Okay. You're going to be rolling the Alpha Crux. It's going to be on a 40-foot typical house shot, so okay. you're going to see more oil in the middle less on the outside. If it's a typical R&D type of a setting, we might bowl in a perfectly flat lane condition because we're looking and trying to see the different nuances with these minor tweaks and changes as we're dialing in the ball motion. But for this demonstration, we're gonna have you bowling on a typical house shot with the Alpha Crux. We're gonna compare it to the new phase as well, which is, that's been a, a very popular ball. There's I been love a lot my of, phase. There's been a lot of buzz on it. I like the fight, I love the phase. So let's uh, so let's get out on the lanes. Let's take you out here and you're gonna okay. be with Victor Marion. Gotcha. He's gonna walk you through uh, the pattern. We're gonna talk about the layouts. We're gonna talk about uh, the kind of motion and comparison you're seeing, okay. um, the difference between the Alpha Crux and the phase. Maybe okay. when's an advantageous time to use each one of those. Right. And we're gonna see exactly what uh, what this new release can do on the lane for you. So Can't let's wait. let's head out there. I love trying new product. <laughs> when introducing the Alpha Crux, one player came to mind, someone who's an absolute fierce competitor on the lanes, Leanne Barrett Holsenberg, USBC Hall of Famer and multi-time women's tour titleist. So when we wanted to talk about the Alpha Crux, we wanted to see exactly what she was capable of. Her stats are 16 miles an hour off her hand, she's 60 degrees of axis rotation, about 10 degrees of tilt, and 400 RPMs. In order to demonstrate the power of the Alpha Crux, we had Leanne do a series of tests for us. During this time, we put her on the bolt system so we could track every single shot and show her just exactly how much potential this ball has in her hands. So after we had her throw shot after shot, ball after ball, we wanted to see exactly how and what this ball was capable of. In this breakdown, we were able to take four of her best shots and we were able to compare them so that we could really see how each ball entered the pocket and how it went through the pins. By looking at one of the shots that best resembled all of the other shots, we can really see exactly how well this ball went through the pocket, perfectly cutting the five pin into the eight into the nine. She was crossing 22 at the foul line with about 2.1 degrees worth of launch angle. This allowed the ball to push approximately 43 feet before it began its mid lane transition and it got out to about the seven board at that breakpoint distance. When it finished in the pocket, it was approximately 19.4 boards, so this ball came railing back rather high into the pocket, generating a substantial amount of entry angle. In order to show how well the Alpha Crux is going to compare against a good benchmark ball, we had Leanne throw one of her favorites, the Fates. 
So as before, we compared it to the four balls going through the pins, just to see exactly how this ball shapes up compared to the Alpha Crux. You can see a nice pocket hit, very clean as it goes through the pins, but it is definitely a lot more smooth in how it reads both the mid lane and its back end motion. This was demonstrated to Leanne using the bolt system and seeing exactly how it shapes up. For Leanne, she set this down at the 18 board with also about 2.2 degrees, but she had to be much further right in order for it to generate the friction necessary. After we finished the comparison between the Alpha Crux and the Phase, I wanted Leanne to try something a little bit different, and that was moving in and getting to the side of the ball. And this is something that we're really proud of with the Catalyst Core and the Alpha Crux is how well this ball shapes up in comparison to some of the other weight blocks we've released. I had Leanne move five boards left and get to the side of the ball in order to really show how much potential this has to create entry angle going into the pocket. In this particular graph, you can see that Leanne was crossing the foul line at the 27 board and she had to increase her launch angle to almost three degrees. You can see that this ball came railing back as it pushed down the lane an extra half a foot and it generated almost 18% more entry angle than her normal release. The best thing about all this data collection is that we can now easily compare how all three of these different lines played. The yellow line being the phase definitely played further outside on the house pattern in order to shape up correctly. The green line was her normal release which showed how strong this ball was when she squared up to the pocket, just rolling it very softly. And then of course the most important one is how deep she was able to move by just adding a little bit of axis rotation to a normal game demonstrated by the top line. With the introduction of the Crux, we brought you a brand new weight block and a brand new cover stock. We saw an astounding amount of success. However, when we introduced the lock, we took that technology and moved it a step forward when we introduced the Game Improvement 15 technology, GI-15. Now when we look at 2016, the introduction of the Alpha Crux, we have that same technology, but we have it updated with proprietary technologies in order to bring you the strongest cover stock we've released. From the original Crux, to the Crux Pearl, to now the Alpha Crux, we have a complete arsenal designed to absolutely destroy the pins on any sort of lane pattern, volume, or condition. We call it the Alpha Crux because it is at the top of its game. Wow, oh, man, I haven't struck that much in a long time. I mean, yep. I struck as much as you did last week. So um, it was a bunch of great data we got on the Bolt system and, and yeah. all the tech stuff for us. Yeah, the new Bolt system yeah. is pretty cool, isn't it? I mean, you know, the CAT system used to be the system that we had, that was kind of our benchmark, and we had, you know, 17 different sensors, and now we're getting 240 right. data points, and we're getting information that we have never gotten before. The bolts is amazing. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're excited to use it for technology and developing our, you know, new cover stocks and cores, and uh, putting it to greater use moving forward. It's, it's going to yeah. be really cool stuff. There's stuff so. that we haven't even used yet that we're going to use, there's so a, it's going to be, there's yeah, a lot. you guys are going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't know, I mean, I don't know, I can't say enough good things about that. I mean, I was able to um, attack the lane a couple different ways. Yeah. I was able to move in and get around it some more. It looks like you were really able to get aggressive kind of towards your break point mm -hmm. and get a little bit more, um, I don't know, a little firmer through the shot and throw it at the drier part. Definitely. Toward the outside, and it never stopped. Uh, we had some oil in the middle of the lane, and mm -hmm. I was able to get in, but it didn't, like, use it all up. Like, it saved me. It was so much back-end reaction that yeah. I was... Not surprised, but you know, pleasantly surprised. Yeah, you know, yeah, so. a lot more entry angle, a lot more hook down lane than I think you've seen before, especially with a ball that that is that aggressive right. and, and reads the mid lane that much. Yeah. So, and yeah. I could just keep moving and moving a little bit, and Victor kept prompting me and asking me to do this and do that, and uh, it was good. I yeah. loved it. I think yeah. you were changing your release a little bit, right? A little you were bit. Changing the ball roll. Yep. Yeah. I started, you know, just kind of you know, up the back of it a little bit. I wanted to try to see what the ball did and, and mm. how it rolled compared to my phase. And then he asked if I could do a little more to it, mm -hmm. which is always a nice compliment. But I moved in a little bit and uh, was able to get around it a little more. Yeah. And um, the ball was amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was definitely noticeably 
more aggressive off the spot, not, not as arcing a shape as what the phase was giving you. Yep. So again, when we're looking at an arsenal and we're looking at a ball motion and shape, hey, this would be two balls are going to play great off of each other, right? Yep, it's going to fit in on my stronger side of my arsenal, but uh, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, probably the strongest I would have right now yeah. and, um, you know, be able to go to back and forth with my phase and, and play off of it when the lanes get maybe a little wet dry or I just can't keep up, you know, as they're breaking down and then I would have to finally put it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to remember too, there's, uh, you know, there's high-end asymmetrical balls. They're great for these types of purposes where you're trying to get a little bit more aggressive pointing it to the outside or throwing it to the outside mm -hmm. and, and creating for that, you know, waiting for that strong motion down lane. But there's also other times when you're looking to maybe create a little bit of hold, right? When you're looking for maybe something that's going to be less aggressive, oh, uh, yeah. something that's going to give you maybe just a little bit more um, smoother transition, let's say, maybe for, again, shorter oil patterns. Right, when the lanes aren't as forgiving, yeah. not with the, when the lane doesn't give you the hold, where you have to like either create it yourself or have the ball give you the hold. Yeah. Um, you know, because we all want a little hook and a little hold. And so. I, I think that ball down is that kind of that term I hear some of the tour yeah. reps, the Del Ballards and Jim Callahan's yes. and Tim Max, when they're out there working with their pros, they're saying, hey, maybe you ought to ball down a little bit and go with something that's going to give you mm -hmm. just a little bit more hold. Now, Jesper, I mean, he, he just won the TSC, right, with the pitch black. I don't think there's ever the term ball down for Jesper, the way he <laughs> throws it, that's for sure. But, yeah, he used a pitch black, yeah. and uh, I think the guys were saying that he's totally loving the pitch blue so far. Yep, yep, yeah, that's so. been a great addition, and we're going to get uh, – actually, your husband is going to be in here, Gary. Uh, who has, as far as style-wise, he's not a two-hander, right? Nope. Last I checked, at least. He's not a two-hander. He's not a two-hander. Could, couldn't be one if he tried. He bowls, <laughs> <laughs> he bowls more like a lot of you out there bowl, more traditional style, yep. thumb in as we do, more yep. down and in. Um, very good bowler, but his, his game is based more on accuracy mm -hmm. and more on repetition, doesn't have a real high rev rate. We're oh. going to put out a 37-foot typical house Perfect. pattern for yep. him to throw the pitch blue and see exactly what that does for him because again you're going to be you're going to see players with really high rev rates like the Jespers and the Anthony Simonsons for example the two-handers right and even the AJ Johnsons that have really high rev rate with with their thumb they in already it. like that ball right they love that ball they've been using it already but when we are what we're going to see here in the next segment is going to be Gary out there showing how you can still get a ball that gives you control that still is going to give you the hitting power at the pins and give you a little bit different shape but again allow you to stay closer to the dry and not have to maybe open up your angle as much so a pro uh, a ball for our pro staff and a ball for um just regular avid league bowlers tournament yep. bowlers at home yeah so good so we'll look forward to seeing how gary um likes his let's head down there and let's see how it looks Gary, thank you very much for joining us today. So I had you drill a pitch blue and I had you compare it against a pitch black because I know you've had a lot of success with it. And What, what was your first impression? Well, I, I've been a big fan of the pitch black for my game. Uh, not only do I use it uh, when the lane's shorter oil patterns, I just use it when I want to tighten my angles up. So I was excited to throw the pitch blue today. Gave me much cleaner ball motion in the front with a little more kick down lane. They're pretty close, but the pitch blue just gave me more recovery. So therefore, I could move my feet, couple left, felt like I could get it going a little right off my hand, and it wanted to read the lane and make it back. But it wasn't like a reactive type ball motion, like a modern day motion. It was more like a little bit old school, kind of fitting for my age group. People seem to think that the only time you can throw urethane is when it's a really short pattern or wood conditions or you know if your rev rate 600 I, I'd have to say your rev rates a little under that by yeah, a tick by, what would you say half. my rev rates under it by at least half <laughs> but here's the thing I, I always learned uh, when I learned how to bowl you, you always kept your target in front of you you close the lane down right the pins 
sounds great. It allows me to play tighter angles, which is kind of appealing. And usually on most league type shots, there's some free hook to the right, isn't there? I'm a fan, go get one. that was a really great segment from Gary trying out the new pitch blue now Steve when I think of urethane I think of it takes me back to my glory days on the old PWBA tour um, but you know I don't think that is like old school urethane that's like new school super urethane yeah it's not just a traditional classic old urethane there, there's more technology to it than that and the one thing that we've you know we've seen or we've noticed there's a lot of people when they're thinking urethane they think well, maybe I can control the pocket, but I'm not going to get that, that hitting power, that right. carry. We didn't see that out of Gary, though. No, and um, my pitch black, I didn't see, I didn't really lose any. I had, I had a couple messengers and stuff. So, and his pitch blue was equally as strong and, and, and great through the pin. So there's no loss in hitting power, even though it is a urethane ball. That's right. And the one thing that's real nice with this, and there are a lot of people, you know, when they're looking at trying to, uh, match up their equipment to their style and their game is they're going to have to take and fine tune or adjust that surface just a little bit. Now, as you know, with the pitch black, we started with the original control solid urethane. It was sanded to a thousand. Uh, it was designed to read the mid lane a little bit stronger, a little bit earlier, give that good control on the back end. This is actually control plus pearl, pearl. urethane, and it's finished to two thousand. Okay, so it's so what's smoother. that mean though? What's the what's what's going to be the main difference between the the pitch black and the pitch blue. That's a, that's a great question. And I think many of you know how many times you've had to maybe try and adjust the surface on your, your pitch black or your traditional yep. urethane ball or tried to resurface it or maybe you had some lane damage or something like right. that. It's very hard to do. It's a very tough material. Uh, this, this Control Plus, what our goal here was to develop a new material which we can adjust and fine tune and work it much more easily. So you can actually take this cover stock and smooth it out or maybe make it a little bit more coarse more easily. It's more workable. It's a little bit more pliable material and that's where the plus comes in. So it's going to be easier for me to keep it fresh, keep a fresh surface, which I like on a bowling ball and not have to drill another one to have a new fresh surface. That surface is going to be easily kept new. You're going to be able to change okay. it more, more readily. Yeah. More, okay. more quickly and more readily. It's going to accept those surface changes. Good stuff. So yeah. good surface. Uh, no loss in hitting power, great hitting power as we've yep. seen, and uh, very controllable uh, reaction. Yep. It sounds like a winner to me. Yep. And, and I think you're going to find that with these two, you know, these two new releases here. Um, we saw the videos with you throwing it, and you and Victor, you're working through the different hand, mm -hmm. you know, positions, different types of roll. I had plenty of room with the Alpha Massive trucks. back end hook, total ball motion was huge. You were yep. able to slide way deep. More get the than ball, I've ever had in a Get the ball a, way outside. While bring it back very strongly and very sharply. And then as we saw in the video with Gary, when we were talking about playing a little bit more down, the, you know, mm -hmm. down and in, kind of playing with the boards, if you're not really sliding deep and throwing it way to the outside, right. just a little bit more down and in, more traditional style. A little style. more room on the lane with it. Yep. This was an excellent, excellent choice. Mm -hmm. And now when you combine these two bowling balls with the phase in the fight that we had our webcast earlier uh, this month, that's been out for a little bit of time mm -hmm. now, we're looking at four dramatically different bowling balls. Very useful uh, places in your bag. They're all going to do something different yeah. um, and they all can kind of play off of each other though, which yeah. is also important. Not just doing something yeah. different, but being able to move from one to the other easily. That's right. And if you have, you know, if anybody out in, in bowling world here has any additional questions, you know, we have a tech team here that's mm -hmm. going to be able to field your support. So you can email us at tech at stormbowling.com at any time and we can address your questions, maybe help you select the right ball, help you choose the right layout for your bowling ball. Uh, we also have great information that's on our website on stormbowling.com. We've got our YouTube channel, Storm Bowling Balls. Uh, we have a lot of great videos and technical information we post throughout social media on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, we're just trying to get you all the pieces you need to help you bowl your best and throw the most strikes. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you, Steve, for all the great um, info on all of our new products and the um, behind the scenes look on how what it takes to build the best arsenal in bowling. 
and uh, we really appreciate all of your great information. My pleasure. Okay. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Without you, we are not the Bowlers Company, and uh, we'll see you next time.